So the next thing I'd like to show you is um, uh, a, new, uh, a new tool that we're bringing in here, which, is, which are the lens flares um, inside of Action. And uh, you know, when looking at lens flares, uh, it's obviously something that's been around for a while, uh, usually very much under the form of 2D plugins. And uh, one of the things that we really f wanted to make sure is that if we were to integrate anything, it should really be inside of the 3D environment of action. And we had kind of this picture in mind that uh, ultimately you'd want something that would instantly react to the environment in which you are in, uh, inside of action and have things happen automatically, uh, like occlusions and things like that. Because you're in a 3D compositing environment, this is what essentially would make it cool and uh, potentially also uh, different from, uh, uh, from, let's say, a regular 2D approach. So here I have a very... Um, basic scene where I actually have a 3D text. Uh, you'll notice that it's textured in a specific uh, way, but I'll, uh, I'll get uh, back to that uh, a bit later. Uh, and, uh, and right now I have, uh, so if I look at my schematic, I have an IBL here, and it's actually also set to, uh, to be a background. So uh, it's, it's lighting my 3D geometry, uh, and, it's, uh, and it's also uh, moving consistently with my camera because I'm actually exposing it as a visible background. Uh, and I've just added a light in my scene. It's pretty far away. And let's see how I can actually add a lens flare to, uh, to this particular scene. Uh, and so, well, it's relatively simple. Again, if you go into the relighting tab that's, uh, that's inside of Action, you will find a, a new lens flare object that's here. And the way that you want to use it is essentially first by selecting a light in your schematic and just dragging the lens flare, which will automatically parent to the, uh, to the light. Now what you see is that not only a lens flare object was created underneath a light, but also a whole bunch of different little objects here uh, that have come with it. This is just the default setup. Of course, everything is fully customizable, and you can do pretty much anything that you want. But just to explain the structure of this object is uh, this particular object will actually carry the main controls over, uh, over the, the general appearance of the lens flare. But each one of these little objects actually control the components that may uh, construct the lens flare and participate. So those are actually textures that are then get stamped in 3D space uh, to generate the final uh, lens flare effect. So if I switch back to my perspective, what you will see is that instantly I have actually created something uh, there. And if I move around, the default behavior is going to detect occlusions in my scene and my lens flare will disappear as it moves behind objects that are in front of it. And this is going to be true of anything, whether it's a 2D layer with an alpha or a 3D geometry, everything will be instantly detected and an occlusion behavior will immediately be applied. Now, what you see again is that the lens flare is actually comprised of multiple components. We have, uh, we see that they're hexagons. We see that there are all sorts of funny patterns, like ring patterns also that appear here, uh, all sorts of things. Well, these are speci specifically the objects that you see represented here underneath the, uh, the, uh, the object. One thing to, uh, to understand with the lens flare is you, you you typically have four different levels at which you can, you can act. The first one is the light. The intensity of the lens flare is going to be indexed on the intensity of the light. So if I start boosting the intensity, my lens flare just uh, becomes gigantic in, in, in the image. So the default behavior is going to be indexed on the light. Then there's the lens flare itself. And so let's take a look at that. So the lens flare also allows you to have a certain intensity factor uh, that, is, uh, that is baked into it. So you can dissociate it from the actual light if you want. Uh, it also allows you to have chromatic aberrations and decide how, how much of it you want within the image. You can also uh, give it a specific color, which by default, again, will be combined to the light color. Uh, you also have the ability to determine how you want the lens flare to react to occlusions. And in order to do this, you essentially have a curve here that determines what should be the behavior of the lens flare uh, um, based on the amount of its surface uh, that gets occluded by an object, okay? Uh, and, and, uh, and of course, as I change, for example, the, uh, the size of the occluder, you will see that I can gradually either decide that I want almost zero occlusions, okay? 
or that if I want, or if I want a very abrupt occlusion, I can do that just by essentially specifying a very small value of the occluder size, and it will have like a very abrupt occlusion behavior. So very little of the surface of the lens flare needs to be hidden for the occlusion to trigger. But the interesting thing about this curve is that I can actually fully customize what happens as the surface gets gradually of the uh, the surface of the uh, uh, of the lens flare object gets gradually occluded. So and I can add keys here and do uh, like a really funny curve here. And what this will actually do is. Uh, is essentially generate this exact fluctuation as the lens flare moves behind an object. So as you see now, I get the double flash, which is what I see here on my curve. And when, it get, when it's actually visible again, again, double flash. Double flash, double flash. So I can actually customize that to my own needs and again determine how much of, of the surface needs to be occluded to trigger that behavior. So I have a lot of flexibility here in the way that uh, my occlusions are automatically generated. The other thing that I can uh, control is what I want to happen, what I want to see happening as the light source moves towards the border of the image. And, uh, and this is controlled by border effects. And as you can see here, I have an interface to determine how much boosting I want to happen uh, for a set of specific parameters that, ca that I can even control for each one of my objects here. So by default, what I get is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a gain boost as my, uh, my light moves towards the side. And uh, you see here, it's, it gets boosted before it gradually fades away. Now this is controlled again by these boxes here where I can actually control what happens on the border, but I can also control what happens when my uh, lens flare comes at the center of the image. So if I actually increase the region of the pivot and boost the gain of the pivot, what you will see is that as the lens flare moves in front of the image, it gets an extra boost before it then moves on to the rest of the, uh, of the image. It's a bit difficult here to see because I have a very bright image behind it, but essentially this is what happens. You have two independent controls here that allow you to determine what happens in the center of the image, what happens on the borders of the image. I'm going to switch it back to the default values here. And let's, let's take a look at what happens here at the object level. So here, these are all the different components that uh, uh, right now are assembled. But again, you're not limited in number, in, uh, 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 in types. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can have as many glow objects, ring objects, streak objects, parent to the, to the lens flare. This is essentially something that you can describe as Lego lens flare. It's up to you to decide what you want to do. So at the object level here, what I can do is in the basics menu, I can determine, uh, I can determine uh, the behavior of, my, uh, of each object as a collection as it's drawn inside of action. So for example, if I want to change the intensity variation of my polygons, I can do this and it affects the collection of hexagons that I'm drawing inside of action. I can also determine how many of these hexagons I want to see drawn inside of the action scene. I can change the scale. So again, those basic parameters actually affect the collection of objects as they are drawn inside of the action scene. What you will see then is that there's also a pattern submenu, which then allows me to control what's the texture that is being fed to action and then gets stamped as a collection of objects. So this is really changing the pattern before it actually gets drawn inside of action. And here if I want to change the number of sides, so here I have triangles, okay. Uh, I, can, I can change the softness of the borders. So all of these things, I can actually create a gap. There's a whole bunch of parameters here that, as you see, actually are changing the texture before it even gets stamped inside of action. So it's really important to understand this hierarchy of controls. The lowest level is the texture. The level just above it is the collection of objects as they get drawn inside of action. The level above it is the actual lens flare. 
uh, that controls the overall behavior. And then on the very top, you have the light that acts as an overall um, modifier of the, of the lens flare. So if we take a look at also some of the, uh, some of the objects that we have here, like the, like the rings that we have here, uh, again, I can double click on the rings and see the interface and you see it has also a pattern, uh, a pattern selection. And in the selection, for example, I can go ahead and change the rings to more like a rainbow type of, uh, uh, type of ring structure. Here I'm increasing the number, then I can actually change the intensity of it, change the scaling. There you go, and as I move around, everything kind of reacts in real time on the fly. So it's a very, very flexible tool that you can customize really uh, in pretty much any way that you, that, that you want. Uh, it would be too long to go into, into the whole detail, but essentially uh, uh, there's a lot that you can do uh, uh, with, these, uh, with these things. One thing also I'd like to point out is that, so the lens flare is actually gets computed inside of a 3D space, which means that if you even decided to film it with a stereoscopic camera, you will actually get a stereo lens flare, something that eventually pops out of the screen, which is kind of uh, uh, interesting. And, um, and you will see that when I select the lens flare, there's a pivot point here that, uh, that appears. I can move this pretty much where I want in 3D space. So it has a Z coordinate, uh, but also obviously an XY coordinate. So I can pretty much do, again, uh, 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 what I want with this. And actually changing the pivot position will also have a drastic effect on the way that the lens flare eventually gets rendered. So there. So there you go. So that's it in a nutshell for lens flare. The next thing that I want to show you is rays.